And I'll go over these objectives, the background, the types of encephalitis, the symptoms, diagnosis, prevention, use as a biological weapon, the prevalence, risk factors, the epidemics, my experiment I researched on, and the conclusion. The background. Word encephalitis comes from the Latin and Greek roots, and meaning within, cephal meaning brain, and itis meaning inflammation. For all those roots together, it means inflammation within the brain. There are over 16 types of encephalitis, and many of them are complications of other viruses like the herpes virus, West Nile virus, yellow fever, measles, mumps, rubella, and etc. It has been discovered in various places over the past centuries. It commonly occurs with meningitis. Meningitis is the inflammation of the, of the surrounding membranes. There are about 10,000 to 20,000 cases yearly. There are two types of encephalitis, primary and secondary. In primary encephalitis, the virus will attack the brains directly and in secondary encephalitis, the disease will attack a, another part of your body and travel to the brain. There are three types of encephalite, encephalitis that I will go over in my presentation. First one I will go over is the Eastern Equine Encephalitis. It affects humans and horses, but I will be mainly focusing on it affecting humans. It can be infected from a mosquito bite. There are only a few cases each year. 33% of the victims who showed symptoms die or had permanent brain damage. It takes four to 10 days to incubate in your body, which means once the virus enters your body, it takes four to 10 days for you to show any symptoms. It occurs mainly in the United States, but there have been previous, there have been other cases overseas. There's a map showing the cases in the past 40 years. As you can see, just by the numbers, it is not very common because there have only been, like for Texas, there have only been five cases in 40 years. Symptoms include fever, headache, anorexia, which is the reluctancy to eat, vomiting, diarrhea, and at worst, coma, and ultimately death. A diagnosis a doctor will perform a cerebrospinal fluid test, which is where a doctor will take fluids from your brainstem, use PCR, which is a polymerase chain reaction, which amplifies DNA, and they test to see the virus is present. Right now, there is no human vaccine created to cure any sort of encephalitis, and you can prevent it by avoiding areas with still water, draining still water in your house, be fully covered and appropriately clothed when you are in forests to prevent being bit by mosquitoes. Use bug sprays and be careful and precautious if you have a weakened immune system. Because if, let's say, you contract like West Nile, you might be able to prevent getting encephalitis. The second type of encephalitis I will go through is Japanese encephalitis. 25% of the cases are fatal, and 50% of the survivors have permanent brain damage. For the permanent brain damage, it usually affects like, like speech, motor skills, and hearing. It incubates for five to 15 days in your body. It is mosquito-borne, like Eastern equine encephalitis, and it also follows a cycle. The cycle would be a mosquito would bite a bird, and then another mosquito would bite that bird and bite a human, therefore infecting the human. Then another mosquito would bite the human, and possibly either bite another human after that, or bite a bird. The greatest risk is in Asia, hence the name Japanese encephalitis. Here's a map that shows the greater risk areas for Japanese encephalitis. As you can see, it's 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 in the countries that are the closest to the water, making it easier for mosquitoes to breed. Symptoms are very similar to the other encephalotides. These include fever, headache, vomiting, seizures, coma, and death. 
Diagnosis is a doctor may take samples of your brain. This is if like CSF tests prove inconclusive. So they will run that through PCR and then detect if the virus is present. Right now, like I said before, there are no vaccines available, but like you could go to the doctor and they replenish you of lost fluids and you can stay at home and take rest and use pain relievers like Tylenols. Another way to prevent it is to avoid being outside at dusk or dawn, using bug spray, being closed properly, and then staying away from still water. Then the last type of encephalitis I'll go over is lacrosse encephalitis. The incubation period of it is about 5 to 15 days, and it has the lowest mortality rate at under 1%. There are around 100 cases yearly, and it is the most common in the United States. It occurs mostly in teens around the age of 16. Here's a map that shows the outbreaks of encephalitis in the past 10 years. Here are some symptoms that are also very similar, including fever, headache, nausea, vomiting, coma, and death. So now they can use both. They can use three ways to diagnose it, through CSF test, which is a cerebrospinal fluid test. They can use blood samples and then use PCR to do that and detect if the virus is there, or also use brain samples, then use PCR and determine if the virus is there. Prevention is make sure your house is sealed properly so you will not have mosquitoes breed, breed in, in still water in your house. Use bug spray and, as I said before, proper clothing and staying away from standing water. It, was used, it wasn't used as a biological weapon, but it was researched as a biological weapon in the Cold War. The Soviets researched the three equine-based encephalotides, which are Western equine encephalitis, Eastern equine encephalitis, and Venezuelan equine encephalitis. They aeros aerosolized the virus and then used it to infect the opposition. They found out it worked because a Soviet doctor dropped the vial about this big in a laboratory and infected 20 people and killed five of them, but it was never actually used during the war. I'll go over the prevalence. It prevails in humid regions and developing countries due to poor hygiene and areas with a lot of still water, and it obviously is the most prevalent in areas with the greatest mosquito populations. So the epidemics and pandemics. There have been three epidemics slash pandemics in the past century. There, there have been one in Australia, China, and there was a worldwide pandemic through 1917 to 1930. The worldwide pandemic was in was mainly in the United Kingdom, the U.S., and the Soviet Union. It was caused by Eastern equine encephalitis, but at that time they had two theories because they had not discovered it at that time. They thought it was either the herpes virus or it was caused by influenza or staphylococcus, which that was false, and they, I believe, 10 years later found out that it was the Eastern equine encephalitis. And then in New South Wales, Australia, between 1990 and 2007, the herpes simplex virus caused 5,926 diagnoses in 17 years. It was the most common diagnosis at that time. And then in Wuhan, China, during 2005 to 2008, there were 5,097 cases, but previously in 1970, there were 174,932 cases. And then now it lowered as a good thing due to the extensive like treatment. But this is like, because there aren't, there is no vaccine. This is just like remedies that they have. Risk factors are having a weakened immune system because there's nothing, because encephalitis affects every race and age and gender. So just having a weakened immune system is probably the only like body related thing that can uh, make you more prone to getting encephalitis. 
living in poor hygienic areas and living near woody areas. My experiment was conducted by Daniel Ruse, Gerhard Dobler, and Hans Helman Niller. The question was, may early intervention with high dose intravenous immunoglobulin, which is IVIG, pose a potentially successful treatment for severe cases of tick-borne encephalitis? <coughs> so the summary was, the three doctors used patients with tick-borne encephalitis virus, that's TBEV, Japanese encephalitis virus, JEV, Dengue fever virus, DENV, West Nile virus, WNV, Eastern Equine encephalitis virus, EEV, and chikungunya virus, CHIKV, and treated them with two doses of intravenous immunoglobulins, that's the IVIG. So they used a 54 year old man with TBEV, a 49 year old Italian traveler with JEV, 15 patients in the Philippines after an outbreak with the dengue virus, eight cases of West Nile virus, a 69-year-old man with EEV, and a 27-year-old and an 85-year-old with chick B. 50% of the human system's symptoms decreased or disappeared. They were, the, they were the patients with the Japanese encephalitis, dengue virus, and West Nile virus. But in the case of the patients with West Nile, out of the eight cases, two patients died and two had to be taken off the treatment due to other serious complications. But for all the other patients, the symptoms had worsened, therefore making it a not so reliable potential vaccine. And my conclusion of the experiment was use of the IVIG was useful in half of the patients. It could possibly be used as a potential vaccine but it did not answer the question or the objective they were aiming for. Like, could it help people with TBEV? And then my conclusion is encephalitis has no cure. It is a common disease in the United States. It is a arthropod borne virus, meaning you can get it from like a tick or a mosquito. It is a potential biological weapon and IVIG could potentially be a vaccine and encephalitis is caused by many diseases my citations, and now I'll open the floor to questions, comments, and constructive criticism. Jessica. Are you doing any of you have a question for Rohan? Austin. So we said that the intensity used to wireless for them. Has any group organization ever used it? No, but they were, it can still be used now, but they, the Soviets did research it, but they never used it. Um, you can't mention it still water in your pathway. Um, you know, so like stagnant water that's, let's say you have, it rained outside and you have a bucket full of water, you should drain it because it's a good place for mosquitoes to breed. Yeah. 